For over a century, movies have perpetuated the idea and the hope that there's intelligent life on Mars. There isn't, yet. But sometime late in this century, two people from Earth might give birth to the first Martian, who may be the first of many more. We will be the Martians. Part of the reason for sending people to Mars would be to do some compelling science. So we would imagine them taking samples, analyzing them, trying to understand the environment when those rocks form, things like that. Astronauts could use a whole variety of tools, uh, hammers, uh, hand lenses, spectrometers of various sorts, uh, chemical analysis machines. There'd be probably some mobile laboratory on the rover that would use uh, the materials that they gathered to look at the composition and so on. Ballast Marineris has a whole variety of different segments. There's places in the middle where there's one, two, three, or even four parallel canyons where you go down and up and down and up and down and up. And then the very eastern end, it looks like water came flushing out through what would be a chaos zone, catastrophic floods of water that might have come out. Was there life in that water? Could some of the rock samples they dig up have enough evidence of fossilized bacteria. Mars was once a warm and wet planet, and we know that for a fact because there are water erosion features all over the surface of Mars. To look for fossils of life, you want to look for places where water has flown or accumulated, and the Valles Marineris might be one of those places. I think it's certainly possible that there's bacterial activity on Mars now, but that's by no means certain. It's, it's a very interesting current scientific question. I think it's one of the sort of most intriguing questions in solar system science. Suddenly, the search for life pauses as the fight for survival resumes. Mission control signals that a high-risk solar flare is headed for Mars. A solar flare is a tremendous outburst from a relatively small region of the sun. A huge amount of energy goes pouring out explosively, and a bunch of energetic charged particles go zooming through the solar system. They can interact with cells and harm them. Also, high energy electromagnetic radiation, like x-rays, gets produced, and those can harm us as well. So it's wham, and then wham again sometime later. Earth's magnetic field shields us from the worst effects of solar flares. But Mars lost its magnetic field four billion years ago. A solar flare of charged protons would be far more dangerous here than on Earth. After a solar flare is seen by people on Earth, we want to warn the astronauts on Mars. Now, we can't warn them about the electromagnetic flash because our warning signal would travel at the same speed as that flash from the sun. But we can warn them about the onslaught of charged particles. The high energy charged particles can travel perhaps at half the speed of light. The HAB has a radiation proof chamber, but it's now too far away. While the astronaut spacesuits shielded them from the solar flare's X rays, they have only minutes to seek shelter before the flare's high energy second wave slams into Mars. For the astronauts in the middle of the Valles Marineris, the only shelter is their pressurized rover. The rover's primary radiation shielding isn't lead. It's the food packets lining the walls, along with the astronauts' own waste material. Feces contain hydrocarbons, and hydrocarbons contain hydrogen. And hydrogen is a very good absorber of radiation. Hydrogen that you have in the form of food before it's consumed uh, will help shield you from uh, some portion of this radiation. And certainly, once you've consumed the food, you want to put your feces in these little sealable Ziplocs and back on the wall of your vehicle to shield you from radiation. If you're going to survive in space, almost nothing can go to waste. Not even waste. There's plenty of risks associated with the human Mars mission. But if you look at human history, 
uh, you know, one thing is clear, nothing great has ever been accomplished without risk. And nothing great has ever been accomplished without courage. If we send humans to Mars in our time, if we establish that little Plymouth Rock settlement on Mars in our time, which is what is within our capability, then 500 years from now, there will be new branches of human civilization on Mars and on many worlds beyond. It's the birth of the future.